Shalom. The Torah this week is Parshat Va'etchanan, Deuteronomy chapters 3 through 7. Moses continues his final addresses to the Israelites. This one starts very personal, telling the people how he pleaded to God unsuccessfully about being allowed to join them as they enter the Promised Land. He also delivers a powerful message that they remain faithful to God's commandments, neither adding nor detracting from them. Moses warns them against idolatry and very eloquently recalls that moment at Mount Sinai, repeating again for them the Ten Commandments with some very interesting changes from the version we read in Exodus. I think we should discuss that another time. But regardless, the Parsha also contains one of the most famous passages in Jewish tradition, the Shema, the Declaration of Jewish Faith, and the first of what would be the three paragraphs that accompanied the Shema. This one is known as the Viahafta, you shall love the Lord your God. Now so much is found in this Declaration of Faith. We have God's uniqueness, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. We also have the duty to love God, Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. You also have in this paragraph the source text for the three, for three major Jewish practices, the wearing of the phylacteries, what we call tefillin, the mezuzah, and the daily recitation of the Declaration of Jewish Faith, the Shema. But let's take a careful look at that first paragraph of the Shema. You shall love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God. How can the Torah command love? I mean, maybe we can be told to control our actions, but how can one control one's feelings? That's a good question. Now, some in our tradition say that we learn to love God when we learn to overcome the obstacles that we ourselves place in the way of that love. Because when we learn to open ourselves up to recognize the gifts of life, the gifts God has given us, we can't help but become so overcome with gratitude that we naturally learn to love our Creator. Okay, that's one way to approach it. I have a different track. You can't command someone to love. I mean, that's, that's an emotion. But the Torah does so. And it does so not just here, but if I'm correct, in two other occasions. Not regarding our children, not regarding our spouses or partners, nor our parents. The only other times, to the best of my knowledge, are where we are commanded in the book of Leviticus, the Ahavta Lerecha Kamocha, love your neighbor as yourself, that's Leviticus 19.18, and the Ahavta Tager, love the stranger, that's 1934. Now you think it's hard loving God. Try loving your neighbor. Yeah, the same one who borrows your tools and constantly forgets to return them. The same one who, when you need them, are not there for you. Love the stranger? Hmm. That's not easy either. The one from a different land, a different culture, different religion, different practices, different understandings of life and language. So how can the Torah command love for them? Well, here's my thought. Maybe the Torah is not regulating emotions, but rather our actions. When it says to love, we show it, not it's an emotion. We show it by our actions, by how we treat others. You, you can't, you can't control your emotions, but you can control your actions. And that's how you show love your neighbor. That's how you love the stranger, by deeds of kindness. So loving God, I'd like to suggest that maybe we do it the same way. You love God, by showing it through actions. How specifically? Maybe by connecting all three. That love of God to those two other times that love is invoked in the Torah. With our neighbor, 
and with the stranger. You want to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might? Show that by loving your neighbor, by loving the stranger. Show your love for God by showing them loving kindness. Those are the actions of someone who loves God. My friend, my, my friends, my thinking this week is that if you struggle with the notion of loving God, I hear you. But maybe you're thinking about it all wrong. Loving God is, by, is found by loving your neighbor, loving the other. That's how you do it. And if you really love God, I'm so happy for you. But don't tell me about it. Don't tell others about it. Show it. Show it by how you treat your fellow human beings. Let us never forget that love is a noun, but it's also a verb. And actions that show a love of others is the way one shows true love of God. May we all have a blessed week.